Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival medicine website doomandbloom.net and the best selling books, The Survival Medicine Handbook, Alton's Pandemic Preparedness Guide, and a number of others. Recently, I wrote an article about the drug remdesivir and the fact that it is the current front runner in the race to find the treatment for COVID 19. The relatively expensive remdesivir replaced chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine in the minds of many as the favored option due to claims of heart complications seen in some studies. In addition, some say the chloroquines have insufficient evidence regarding their effectiveness. Other studies are still in progress, but the question is, are they looking at the right combination of drugs? The chloroquines entered the spotlight when a New York City physician named Vladimir Zelenko claimed that his patient population avoided, for the most part, the ravages of severe COVID-19 infection by taking the following outpatient treatment regimen. Hydroxychloroquine, 200 milligrams a day for five days. Azithromycin, 500 milligrams a day for five days. And zinc sulfate, 220 milligrams a day for five days. Hydroxychloroquine is an inexpensive, well-known drug used for decades in the treatment and prevention of malaria. Azithromycin, well, that's a popular antibiotic mentioned in previous videos on this very channel. And zinc sulfate is a supplement of an important mineral. President Trump has focused media attention on hydroxychloroquine by speaking favorably about it, which has unleashed a storm of criticism by his detractors. The polarization around the drug therapy has become political and spawned a number of studies about whether hydroxychloroquine is at all effective against COVID-19 or not. The media says it's not. The studies that claim the chloroquines are ineffective, as far as I can tell, however, only evaluate the effect of chloroquine alone or in combination with azithromycin, without any mention of zinc. Yet Dr. Zelenko not only used zinc sulfate, but feels that it is this mineral that slows viral replication. The chloroquines act mostly as an aid to zinc. The azithromycin is added only to prevent secondary bacterial infections, not to combat the SARS-CoV-2 virus itself. Zinc may be the most important part of the combination, yet it appears to be left out of many of the studies. Therefore, it doesn't surprise me that a chloroquine would have questionable benefit without zinc supplementation. It also doesn't surprise me that at the higher doses used by some studies that adverse reactions to chloroquines would be reported. After many decades, we've figured out what an optimal dose is, albeit for malaria. Testing it at much higher amounts, of course, should increase the amount and severity of side effects. Let me say a little bit about zinc. Zinc is an often forgotten aid to health that's found in every cell of the body. It's second only to iron as a mineral in our body, as a matter of fact, and it's integral to immune function and many other body processes. Failure to maintain adequate amounts of this essential trace element is not uncommon in those that are over the age of 60, the population that indeed seems to suffer most with COVID-19 infection. Zinc allows the body to produce and activate immune cells that respond to infection, but zinc may also modulate the body's immune response in order to prevent the severe inflammation that can destroy lung tissue when that system goes haywire. That's what seems to be killing many severe cases of COVID-19 patients. The body doesn't store excess zinc, so it has to be obtained in foods such as beef, shellfish, nuts, cheese, chicken, and oats. Zinc toxicity can occur if excessive amounts are taken over time, but Dr. Zelenko's regimen calls only for five days of treatment. It's true that Dr. Zelenko didn't perform a peer-reviewed, random, double-blind controlled study. Personal observations on his own patients and some protocols used in Asia and France are pretty much the extent of his evidence. Therefore, I'm not surprised at the criticism leveled by academics on his data. I know, however, that lab findings and statistics can be shaped, at least partially, to agree with a scientific or even a political agenda. For example, how many people given high doses of chloroquines already had heart disease or were experiencing heart complications? How many given a placebo did? How far gone were some of the patients that experienced a bad outcome? There are many factors that complicate statistics. If you're going to fairly evaluate success or failure, then you have to duplicate Zelenko's methods as closely as possible. Just testing chloroquine and or azithromycin without the addition of zinc is insufficient, in my opinion, to say that his treatment protocol is worthless. Until a study includes zinc, university scientists and the media shouldn't assume so. The missing zinc may be the missing link. 
I'll admit, just because I haven't found results of a study using chloroquines and 220 milligrams of zinc sulfate as part of the protocol, doesn't mean that those studies don't exist. I know one indeed that started a few weeks ago, but results won't be available until the end of the year. If you know of a study with bad outcomes that includes chloroquines and zinc that has been completed, please send me a link below. This is Joe Alton MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to fill those holes in your medical storage with medical kits, personal protection gear, and other supplies at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.